Hey, what's going on? Liron here. Sorry, no live stream today again, but I do have this video for you. This is going to be a relatively for beginners painting process. We're going to paint the two apples on the right. And what I love about these types of subjects is that they're very simple in their essence. It's not a complex composition. It's just one circle, another circle behind that, the shadows they cast. Uh, and so everything is quite straightforward. We're not talking about complex shapes here. It's all very well contained within the areas of the shapes we're working on. And that's what I want us to focus on, enjoying the paint moving within the shapes that we painted. Um, so you almost don't have to think too much about a sketch or, sh or shapes in general. What you really end up focusing on is just the paint and the water doing their thing. Uh, as for this drawing, yes, it is quite simple. Two, um, two round shapes, one for each apple. Notice the cast shadow cutting through. Use different reference points to find where to place what. You don't, you don't have to just guess. You can see that where the apple gets rounded, that's where the shadow of the apple from behind hits it. You'll notice the stem goes into the apple that's behind, right? Now, there's this rounded shape up top where the stem comes from and then a rounded shape for the cast shadow of the stem. Uh, a pretty st straightforward um, structure we have here. But a couple of things to note. Uh, light is coming from the right, a little bit from the front. Um, it casts a shadow onto the left uh, and it casts a shadow inside that base where the stem comes from. And also we have a bit of a reflected light, especially down below where some of the white of the surface reflects back on the apple, especially the apple closer to us. So things almost lighten up as we go uh, under. Now I don't remember if I cut all the nuances of that, but we'll get to it in a second. Now one thing I can give you, this is a really cool uh, tip that helped me with apples. It's just something I figured out. It's not really a tip, but it's something that helped me. Very often you'll look at it and you'll see a green there. Uh, it's very effective sometimes to just put a yellow. It's so bizarre. The apple looks green, but if you put a yellow and a red next to it, the yellow almost will read like a green. It's a little strange. It works for me. Of course, you can put a green there. You can go ahead and mix the color you see and try to uh, get it to look as accurate as you want to. That is perfectly fine. I find that this works really well. Now, one thing you'll note is that my wash is quite wet and I'm not in a hurry, I'm not in a rush to open it up. While I have this contained area, and it's something I, I repeat myself many times, I always say this, work with the area that is wet. Um, uh, render it to look perfect so that later on uh, you can worry about the other areas, but, but once it dries, you can't do too much. So while it's still wet, it's very effective to focus on it. Um, uh, which is why I'm not in a hurry to open up the area. Now I will paint these two apples pretty much as one continuous wash. Um, we'll do two layers, so you'll see how the glazing works, because I've come to a lot of um, a lot of new insights as to the glazing and how that kind of a thing works. Um, the reason I'm giving it some time before skipping over to the next apple is I want to make sure I get all the dark red underneath. It's not gonna go all in one go. Um, I'll get some nuance of it, but because it's a dark next to a light, I want to really make sure that it's starting to settle before moving on to the apple below as I'm gonna do now, okay? So you'll notice the way I let the two merge together is a bit careful. Um, the brush goes into the red area, so it makes sure it doesn't go back too much into the apple at the front. My sole reason for doing this really is just that I want to have some kind of a difference in value there already now. now in, in simple terms, I don't want all the dark red to already bleed into the f apple in the front. Um, now I'm doing not as good of a job as uh, in painting this the yellow individually here. Um, so it's not gonna read as green, but that's actually fine. The, the thing about this subject and why it's great for beginners is it's so organic, you have a lot of freedom in how you use your colors and, and I'm actually trying to prioritize the flow and, the, and the, the beauty of the paint and really let it do its thing and move out of the way. Uh, and even being aware of it, I still didn't move enough out of the way and I'll probably do a few more versions of this one and move more out of the way. Now you'll notice one thing I'm skipping is the highlights. That is very practical, I wanna leave them. They're very bright here. The surface of the apple is very shiny. <laughs> I dropped something on the floor there. Uh, the surface of the apple is very shiny. So I want to preserve that. Um, now I am lifting back some of those areas that 
should have been kept lighter and with a, an individual yellow. That's fine. Uh, we will soften out the highlights later on. Now, we need to work fast because the edge of this apple below starts to dry and I need to continue with the shadow. Okay, so something I'm aware of as I'm working on this, if you give yourself enough of a runway by using very wet paint, you'll have enough time to um, charge, paint into it, darken it, lift, all of those good stuff, and you'll still have an edge that is fairly moist. Like the top here, you'll see it starts to blend together a bit awkwardly, but what I found is if you just move the brush over the edge once or twice, it will kind of, uh, they'll, the edge will rub rub out and will still look really good. And you'll see this in the in the next wash too. It will look really good. Now the key with the shadow here to me is just increasing the blue that so far we didn't have at all. So now I'm adding more blue and as it moves away, you'll notice there is some red there too. I'm not really sure if that's reflected from the third apple, but I decided to include this effect because I think it looks really good. Um, so the shadow has some variation of cool and warm. Now everything is dry. Let's look at how we approach the next wash that is going to end this uh, painting process. So I'm pre-wetting because I want uh, to have some control over a soft edge there. And what I'll, I'll usually do with the second wash, I discovered the power of glazing lately and it's so fun. So the thing is, if you're using the same color and relatively light, you don't go super duper dark. Uh, I'm, I'm close to that border, up, but I'm not there really. Um, <coughs> you will get a brighter color. So glazing multiple layers of yellows and reds and even blues, they, it ends up looking really good. It ends up increasing the saturation until a certain point. Past a certain point, you may end up dulling the paint, uh, but, but especially if you're just careful to go light, you can go even lighter than me significantly, like half of the value I'm using, and it will still be a beautiful process. Um, uh, so yeah, now here I'm in maintaining that border. I have no real interest in merging uh, the two apples here. I'll probably keep it separate for the for most of the painting process. Um, now, as we get to the part that's facing towards us, look at how rich and dark it is, right? So I added a bit of carbazole violet. As for my colors, very simple, pyrrole scarlet, lemon yellow, phthalo blue, and now you saw a bit of uh, carbazole violet. The colors don't matter. I reached two different colors based on the temperature I need. Now, now I need to make sure that the right side is not too dark because there is some reflected light on the apple there where it goes a little lighter. Um, these are all things, by the way, that's much easier to see after you finish the painting process. Now I'm seeing a lot of the things, oh yeah, this could have been better. This, But, but the point is, as long as it has that richness to it, I love it. Um, and I think it looks really, really good. Uh, I could glaze the yellow with more yellow or a bit of blue, by the way, too. I didn't do that. I could, and that'll push it to be more green. Now, one thing you don't want to forget is that uh, shadow in the middle, right? Uh, there's this nice little dip where the stem comes from, where the stem stems, <laughs> and uh, that's where it all goes a little darker. Uh, so you wanna make sure to get that in, cause that's what gonna, what's gonna give it the look of being, you know, an inner part of the apple, apple inner part. Uh, now I'm, I'm smoothing out a bit of the edge there. Uh, the second glaze or the third glaze, sometimes is a good opportunity to soften an edge because you soften the current uh, wash and it still looks like sometimes it loosens up the previous one too. It's just a good opportunity. Uh, and we'll probably get the stem in here too and as well as the, the darkness in the center there. Um, those are quite important because they help us tell the full story. Um, this is one of the biggest characteristics of an apple, right? That it has that dip um, and you want to convey it. Now the dip stops over on the stem, but I added it a bit more to the left so that it just makes more sense logically to me to show that the dip is all around there. Now, and then I'm gonna also uh, indicate the cast shadow. Now with cast shadows, the way I think about it is I don't really obsess over what's casting the shadow. I'm more obsessed over the shadow indicating the surface that we're looking at. So the surface goes like this, so the shadow also goes around it like that. Now, and, and now we're pretty much done with the uh, apple above. I'm just gonna clean out this little detail, make it a little softer part of the background. Uh, and that allows us to move on to the next one with a perfect nice border that creates that contrast. I love that kind of a uh, kind of an effect. This is why, by the way, I didn't paint just one apple. I wanted to show you to contrast the light side of the apple with something dark, 
Okay, um, it, it's something I enjoy greatly. You know, I love contrast. Uh, now I'm gonna start um, mapping out that big shadow that's facing towards us. Now I'm noticing all sorts of nuances that uh, I think could work well there with uh, with quinacridone rose too, not just spiral scarlet. Here we go. I'm reaching into the quinacridone, so uh, probably noticed a bit of that in real time too. But the important thing is. The lower part of the apple, where it starts to face the table or the surface, that's where you you don't want to go too you know too um, dark there. If you, if you're trying to um, convey the reflected light, um, the reflected light it's a concept that you know I've I've known about for a long time, but just now I'm starting to notice. Now, if you're a beginner, you don't really have to worry about all of these nuances. Uh, I more care about. Can you fill in the, the shape of the apple in an enjoyable way? You know, maybe throwing in a few colors, throwing in a bit of red, a bit of yellow, uh, maintaining maybe some of their independence as colors um, and all of that good stuff. Uh, those are the kinds of things I, I really enjoyed as a beginner. It's why I used to paint a lot of birds. That would give me a lot of freedom too. Um, what I'm looking for is to get a feel for the medium, if that makes sense. I want to feel what it, what, how it behaves, how it handles. Uh, that's what I care more about, especially that's what I cared about in the beginning. Now, look at this beautiful edge we're going to get now where the pyrrol scarlet blends into the shadow. I love that. Um, and this is great, but the one thing I will modify a bit is adding a bit of a darker base at the very bottom of the apple. Uh, you'll see me doing that in a second. Now I'm switching back to a little bit of a warmer uh, shadow mixture could have gone a little lighter too, but I didn't want to take the risk of maybe it drying unevenly. Um, <coughs> but in a second, you'll notice I'll start mixing. There, there are a few small kind of modifications I want to do here, not too much, just adding a bit of darkness to the right. But near the base of the shadow, while it's still wet, I'm mixing it off the camera. My apologies, it's very thick paint. Um, I'm just touching the base there while it's still quite wet, um, and that's gonna tell the story of this is the base of the apple this is where it interacts with the surface and you'll notice it it happens also in the in the photo as well and i don't care that this goes up into the apple too this shadow it's okay it's actually very convenient uh it's an example of just letting the paint do its thing you know i'm gonna add the stem over there uh and of course the cast shadow and the internal shadow that indicates the shape of the apple that's very important uh notice how i'm also not going into too much texture you can get quite a lot of texture showing on the apple it has these uh nice red stripes you could honestly get that with a glaze over everything i did now you can let it all dry and just do it um I'm not a big fan of patterns. I like to almost let the viewer imagine the pattern. I don't find patterns an attractive thing to paint unless unless it's a pattern of shapes that seem very abstract. So I love, for example, the tarp painting I did. I love that kind of a pattern. I don't like as much a linear pattern or if you see like a um like a fence, wire fence, I don't I'm not gonna sketch them all out or even shingles I'm gonna go very gentle on the pattern um, and that's what guides me here too I'm gonna try and darken that base a little more while I can because uh, again if you want to give us a sense that it, it runs deep into the apple uh, that's something that's useful and you'll also notice that the stem goes darker in the higher parts it starts green and then it goes a little um, brown around the top so one more thing to note uh, now we're going to loosen up a bit of this um bit of this highlight too that we haven't gotten the chance to i'm also absorbing back a bit of paint from the apple at the back just to make sure sometimes you will be left with a pool at the bottom that can flow up back into uh, uh paint that is drier that can happen and a bit of a dab probably with a tissue uh, okay, just a bit more rubbing it and then a dab uh, and I'll uh, solidify it. I just want my dab to be accurate because some parts are still wet. When you dab like this, you want to be a little careful. Uh, generally, even when you dab wet paint, you're running a risk, so you have to be careful. Now, notice the left part is not dark enough, so I thought I'd do it earlier, but well, now is a better time than never. Uh, so I'm darkening uh, while being careful as we go down lower, again, to, to keep it quite light. What I think we're seeing on the left is actually the person taking the photo. By the way, I'm gonna put a link to the photo as well in, in the credits it's from the wet canvas uh, reference library. Um, so I'm gonna add that abstract figure to the left in a second, just uh, figure out, uh, and, and again, bottom, a little lighter, so we have to be a little careful there. Um, a bit of quinacridone into that mix. Going to put the figure there. It's not going to be dark enough, so I'll add more paint. Um, it's so interesting to recognize what things are 
Uh, even though you stare at a photo for a long time, sometimes it takes a while to figure out what you're looking at. And there we go. This is our little reflection. Kind of rubbing in a bit of these edges, but I, I like the, the fact that some of them show. Could have gone even darker in the apple here in the front, but I honestly really like the way it looks. I hope you found this one helpful. Great for beginners. You know, it's very simple, abstract, direct. Um, and yeah, I really hope you gained something out of it. I do want to thank you so, so much. Thank you especially to everyone who supports me over on Patreon. If you want to receive credits at the end of my videos, this is how you do it. You go over to Patreon. You can just do a buck a month, and that's great. Um, and also, if you want to check out this specific method more in depth. I have tons of other videos. You'll get links to them as soon as this ends. But also the Frustration Free Watercolor course, link below. And I will talk to you again real, real soon. Take care.